What's up guys, it's your boy Chababoy18 here and I am going to be doing uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix race before b review but before I do that, there's something I need to tell you guys um, right here in the background right here, you you would always know that there was a laptop there uh, sadly that is not the case my laptop's just going really weird um, I've taken on board your advice I've taken them board it, um, my dad's currently working on it at the moment, it really really sucks to me because this this laptop has been in here for, for like a couple of months, it's been part of my family, it's been, it's been part of the family, it's been part of my YouTube, you know, history, you know, in terms of creating thumbnails, doing homework, you know, all sorts. And uh, it is coming to the end of its life, you know. It, um, it's, I think, it's, to be fair, you know, it's coming to the end of its life now. So, really, really sucks. But whatever, doesn't matter. I'll, I've got a PC coming up uh, next month, so hopefully, you guys um, will see a difference. Um, in terms of my vlogs, uh, I am going to keep it the same way as I'm doing at the moment. I don't think they need. Uh, massive changes at the moment maybe you know one or two occasions I might do like a vid where I'm using the capture car and I might post like a grand as my five vid where I'm just sliding a car or whatever and then talking about something else so yeah folks there might be one or two occasions but I think most of the time it's going to be like this so yeah folks um, and um, yeah like I said capture cards come next month uh, it's not going to come on Christmas, it's going to come probably on January, so when I come back from my Christmas break, like I always do every single year, I will have those vids on Capture Cards, if not then probably maybe later on in the year. See ya folks, um, I hope you guys will appreciate uh, the new vids, the new uh, better quality vids that are going to be coming up uh, throughout the next couple of months. See ya folks. So, to the Brazilian Grand Prix, uh, qualifying, very, very chaotic. Um, in Q1, a lot of chaos happening all, like, along the way. Vern having a problem with his intermediate, intermediates, couldn't get into Q2, but then at the final um, at the final lap, he managed to do it. What a lap by Jorik Vern. I mean, he did so well to get into Q2. Um, you know, just just bagging in there, you know. I and um, a lot of people he said that he could have been massively angry about not getting into Q t QT, you know. Um, but yeah, folks, I mean, good job by uh, Jerry Vernon. And then I think later, I think he got taken off Q two. I'm not quite sure. It was a lot. I think I don't remember the significance of uh, Vern throughout Q two and Q three there. So uh, apologies for that. Um, but yeah, folks, into Q two. Nothing much really happened, you know, still the same wet river coming down. But then at the end, uh, Sergio Perez spinning his McLaren into the wall. A uh, very, very tragic end to Sergio Perez's, Sergio Perez's um, qualifying session. Not some, not, not um, something, to, you know, to, to do, you know, especially... Um, as he is coming to his final race with McLaren, um, with, um, and also with, also maybe the last race of his F1 career, you know, it's just, I really hope Sergio does not, uh, leave F1, I really hope that doesn't, that is not the case, because I love Sergio, Sergio's a really nice guy, yes, I know he can be aggressive, yes, I know Monaco, we've seen him be aggressive, but, honestly, Look at 2012. He has done so well. He has produced the goods. I think this guy has got a few more years in the bag. I really hope um, he does get a drive. Probably maybe Salba. I, if, if if Salba give him a drive, that'll be absolutely great. You know, for his career because he's had a lot of good memories with them. So yeah, folks, I really hope that it is the case. So. Into Q3, 
and um, it began to chuck down River Raid. We had a, tw- uh, I think we had like a, we had a thirty to forty minute delay, and um, I think it was absolutely horrendous. Um, I think it was absolutely. I, I was outraged. I was massively outraged. Uh, what the FIA have said, you know, to the rain, because you know the, these are Formula One drivers. These are the best guys in the world. Why are you not get let, letting them loose on a soaking damp track? Because um, I knew I, I thought you know at the start. Okay, fair enough. At the start, when it was chucking it down, when it was was. We was massive when it, when the rain was at its wettest. I thought like, okay, this is too far. Okay, we might get a sort of twenty two thousand nine sort of thing like that. But then, as it started to as it started to dry up, then it became sort of um, then it became sort of drivable now. And um, I really think they should have let them out. Probably when the um, the fog and whatnot had has like sort of blown away. That should have been the point where they should have gone. Um, but, yeah, folks, they just kept them back for, like, ten minutes, which I'm really outraged by, so... But whatever, that's life. These things can happen. And, honestly, in life, eh, sometimes it goes... It Sometimes it goes uh, the way you want it to go. Sometimes it goes the way you don't want it to go. So, yeah, folks, I'm not too fussed about that. That's just... That's just life. So, yeah, folks, and, um, in the end, Sebastian Vettel took pole position um he took pole position to the brazilian grand prix good pole position there um just absolutely amazing doing it you know um getting a lot of uh pressure you know by the lot of the guys behind because he had not set he had not set any um he had not set the fastest time in any session through this weekend, and he, and the last time he and that the last time that happened was in Silverstone, um, where Vettel um, retired from the race from a gear problem. Uh, so yeah, folks, he got on pole. Good result by him there. Uh, pole doesn't um, doesn't you know give you more points, but it give it gave him a really good chance for the victory, um, which I'm going on to next to the race now. Um, so, um, Sebastian Vettel getting a poor start off the line. Nico Rosberg getting the lead of the race. Uh, Fernando Alonso trying to get uh, to the front of the group, but couldn't do it because he was boxed in by um, Sebastian Vettel. And ultimately, he that dropped him behind uh, Lewis Hamilton. But then afterwards, uh, Alonso got by Lewis Hamilton. And same with Weber, And then Weber got by Alonso as well. Um... And also, uh, Sebastian Vettel got past Nico Rosberg going down the main straight. Good move for him. Great, great move by um, Sebastian there, um, showing that he can race. He, he that he can race, and showing that he's a worthy, worthy um, success to Formula One. Uh, so yeah, folks, and later on during the race, we saw a lot of good battles, particularly the best overtake uh, by far was Jensen Button, starting on the hard tyres. For me, a very, very uh, big gamble by uh, McLaren, because uh, a lot of guys are on the uh, medium compound, and uh, we know that the medium compounds uh, are the option tyres, and the primes, and the hards are the primes. So I was expecting Jensen to really fall back to, uh, to not be making up a lot of places. But the way Jensen did, you know, especially, you know, going up against me in compound tyre cars, that was so good. And especially going around the outside of Esteban Gutierrez. Good move there. I mean, just just, just the move the move of the season, I think, to be honest. Because, you know, before that, you know, my move of the season for me would have to be the Alonso Weber pass back in Italy because they were so close um and they and it and from the amount of uh distance that they were from each other I thought that it was gonna end in heartbreak and one of them were gonna was gonna spin out and probably go into the barriers there. But no they kept it uh, cool and managed to get past uh managed to get through unscathed, maybe a bit of contact um with uh front wing and whatnot. But that's besides the point. That's besides the whole, uh, the, that's besides the Brazilian Grand Prix, 
Uh, so yeah, I like it. Back to this. Great, great move. Great, great move. Um, and then later on, during the race... Uh, Felipe Massa got a drive through penalty for crossing the sort of hatch, some some pit white line hatch or something like that. Very very weird that they've made this rule because honestly, you know, I don't think it does any effect because I I think it, I don't think it makes any effect, you know, because you know they're going they're they're just going like a tiny bit back. And last year, when they were, I think, like, uh, in the last couple of years when they were doing it, there was no harm, no damn it, no um, danger, no nothing else, nothing, nothing wrong with that. So it seems weird that F- the FIA are starting, you know, to give um, penalties to drivers that are doing that. So yeah, folks, I mean, just just, just the weird uh, penalty that they've um, made for this race. And yeah, folks. And then uh, after, when he was told that he got the drive through, he was outraged, and so was I. I was a little bit outraged about that because, you know, that was a stupid penalty. You know that, you know, ca- crossing the pa- the hatch thing. <laughs> no different. No difference whatsoever. I do it all the time. It's, it's made no dangers whatsoever. You know, it ha- it's not affected. It's not affected a car. It's not affected anything. So yeah, folks. Bit weird that they've done that, but that's life. You know, life is unfair, to be honest. Um, And yeah, folks, after that, um, Lewis Hamilton hit um, uh, Valtteri Bottas. That um, that, uh, took uh, his uh, wheel off and um, put him out of the race. I think um, Lewis there, I mean, just just not looking. Um, You know, when I saw it, you know, um, when I saw it again... I quickly, re- I, I knew Hamilton was at fault with that. Being a Lewis Hamilton fan, I've got to say that was a bit, I was Lewis's fault. I'm sorry, but that was because he turned in on him and he defended. If you looked on the replays, Hamilton was defending. He was going down to the inside, so you knew he saw him. And when he go, went into the Deskido de Largo, he, um, he pushed out um, Bottas, so... Ultimately, I think it's Hamilton's fault. Did not see him. Uh, I think it's Hamilton's, yeah, Hamilton's fault because he did not give a car's whiff because he did because he did see him um, because of the defensive move that he did on him. So yeah, folks. And then after that, uh, Sebastian Vettel came into the pits, but the tyres were not ready. The tyres were not ready. Every the. All the Red Bull mechanics were getting the tyres on. It was costing them seconds after seconds after seconds, and then uh, and then to top off Red Bull's um, Red Bull's unluckiness, Weber was uh, Weber was going to have Weber Weber was um, stacking and was queuing behind uh, Sebastian Vettel there. As he was um, as the, the Red Bull mechanics were trying to get the, his right tyres on uh, to get out of the pits. Um, in first place there. Um, very, very lucky that the Red Bull guys did not lose the lead there from um, from Alonso or Weber, um, for that matter, even though he was behind him. Um, yeah, folks, just, just utter craziness around that period of time there. And then after that, Jean-Rick Verne hit uh, Pastor Maldonado. That spun him round. Um, really, really stupid, um, stupid, stupid, uh, collision by Jorik Verne there, just, just, I mean, just total silliness, total silliness right there, because, um, Pastor was way at, well ahead of, um, Pastor Maldonado, um, Jorik Verne can argue that Pastor was, um, Pastor did not give him any space, uh, to complete the job, but, you know, I, I've got to say, you know, he was too... But I've got to say, you know, Pastor was well ahead of Jean-Luc Verne when that happened. So, yeah, folks, I think, you know, I think Jean-Luc Verne, you know, should have got a drive-through for that the last couple of laps, you know. There was there was enough laps to, um, to make that happen. Um, so, I don't know why that, that they haven't, you know. Five laps to go, three laps, they got to take it. 
Exactly. So yeah, folks. And then in the end, Sebastian Vettel took the victory. He and um, he has matched Michael Schumacher's record of 13 wins in a season, and also beated a uh, record as well. Nine wins. Uh, nine wins in a row. That's just crazy. That's unbelievable. You know, I've, that's that's really unheard of before. I've I've never you know achieved that in you know career mode on F1 2012 or 2011 or 2010 or or even 2013 at the moment there. So that's just amazing. You know, that just shows uh, how good Vettel is. You know, in terms of his skill. You know, in terms of, you know, making the car good. Yes, people can argue that Adrian Neary is the, the superstar that makes it all happen. But I think ultimately it is Vettel that does it because his skill is phenomenal. And um, if you compare it to Weber, that's just that's just unbelievable. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's... It's it's not, you know, the car. I think it's himself that has achieved those records, and he deserves it massively. See so, yeah, ya, folks. And to Webber, what a great way to get a podium in his last race bef- um, uh, before he goes to Porsche. You know, I can't wait to see him in Porsche. You know, I've been following the FIA World Endurance Championship uh, for... The last uh, two years, and um, I haven't been seeing you know the Shanghai or the Bahrain one, but I am going to be seeing. I am going to be trying uh, and to get as much for, um, much coverage as I can on this year, on next year, um, especially with Mark, Anthony, Alec McNeish, uh, Marcel Fassler, um, Benoit Clier, and and um, Andre Luttler. Um, so yeah, folks. I mean, just can't wait to see what you can do um, in the in the Porsche at uh, many um, world class tracks against the Toyota and the Audi. So yeah, folks, and also to Felipe Massa. What a way to end! You know, it's not not something. Actually, you know what? Don't actually you know what? It's not you know unlucky that um, really really disappointing that he did not that he got a drive through. Um, during the race, they're not a nice way, you know, to end his uh, Ferrari career. Um, and yeah, folks, I mean, just disappointing, disappointing massively uh, by uh, the number two Ferrari driver there. And um, let's hope and pray he has a better, uh, he has a better season with Williams. See ya, folks. And um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. It's your boy, Jabba Boy, when it ain't. I'm out. Peace.